And good afternoon and welcome to the 55th Annual Missouri State Boys High School Soccer Championships. We are at the Worldwide Technology Soccer Park here in Fenton, Missouri as we get set for the Class 3 State Championship match. And this has one upstart and one traditional power as they get ready to do battle here on the main stadium field. First, it's the Webster Grove Statesmen. They come into this one 23-3 on the season. They are here in the Final Four for the fifth time, and they are seeking the third state title in school history. They won it all back in 2014 and 2015 under then-coach Tim Cashel. They were also here in 2018 with a second-place finish and 2019 with a third-place finish. So no strangers to this Final Four. On the other side, well, let's go back to Webster real quick. They are coached by Tim Velton, and Tim has spent his entire varsity head coaching career here at Webster Groves. They are currently riding a five-game winning streak and a six-game unbeaten streak as they had a late-season tie in their last contest against Ledoux, and then they won all five of their postseason matches. Now you look on the other side in the all-black strip. That is the Kansas City East High School Bears, and they come in here for the first time ever, their record 22-1 and on the back of a big 2-0 victory yesterday over the Glendale Falcons. They are led by their head coach, Gerzo Guerrero. Again, also the entire coaching career here in his first year at East High School in Kansas City, and they would love to get that first state championship as well. As all of the participants in this one, the starters and the officials, get ready to take the field, we're going to turn it over to our PA announcer, Jim Powers, and he'll bring you the starting lineups and some other info on the game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you all to please rise and remove your caps as we honor America with the point of our national anthem. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet today's participants. First, the statesmen of Webster Grove. They come in today's game with a record of 23 and 3. The statesmen are coached by Tim Belton. The starters from Webster Grove are number zero, Luca Zarki. Number four, Brandon Hurd. Number five, Jack Lewis, the second. Number eight, Jonas Osterley. Number nine, Jameson Petlow. Number 10, Oliver Doyle. Number 11, William Huff. Number 14, Riley Myhill. Number 35, Jake Clifton. Number 20, Hobby Baker. And number 26, Maxwell Warnicky. The Wester Grove Statesman. And now for the Bears of East High School. They come into today's game with a record of 19-2-1. The Bears are coached by Cruzo Guerrero. The starters for East, 
Number 33, Eliza Perez. Number four, Omar Savani. Number six, Safari Ivonia. Number six, or excuse me, number 22, Norbert Vicindi. Number 10, Asube Bayo. Number 16, Charlie Pepe. Number 17, Safiri Ibundi. Number 19, Nathan Victor. Number 20, Azalante Abadala. Number 21, Yuseni Muda. And number 24, Jackson Suzermania. Ladies and gentlemen, the East High School Bears. Your officials for today's game are Nicholas Rosa as our lead official. Mark Tuman and Andrew Ellsworth are the assistant referees, and our fourth official is Tyler Hester. These officials are selected to work this event due to their outstanding work and commitment during the season. Well, there you have the starters and the officials in this one. Once again, the referee is Nicholas Rosa in the middle of the park. It'll be Mark Tiemann and Andrew Ellsworth on the outside and Tyler Hester, the fourth official, over here on the near side at the table. Webster Groves, they'll be in their all-white strip with black numerals, a little bit of orange trim mixed in there. They'll move from left to right on your computer screen, so they will have that 10-mile-an-hour wind or so at their back. Temperature right now hovering just around 30. 38 degrees, so about 10 degrees warmer than it was yesterday when these two teams played in their respective semifinal matches. On the other side, East Kansas City, they're in that all-black strip with those dark green numerals and trim with a little bit of white around them, so we'll do the best we can to make out those numbers as we go throughout the contest today. It's a little difficult, but nonetheless, we'll do what we can. The sunshine will help us just a little bit. Yesterday, we were a little bit more of a gray day with a little more cloud cover. But the Bears will move from right to left on your computer screen. They have the ball first. They'll be going into that wind, that slight little bit of a wind, as we get set to go. And you see right there in your camera angle already more fans on that other side of the field than we had. Borgia, as they captured that Class 1 state championship just a little while ago, they had a nice student section. Not much in the way of students for Summit, but East Kansas City does have a few over there, and they've also got a nice contingent out here on the near side. And the grandstand to the left of where we're at right near midfield is absolutely packed with Webster Groves fans. So we'll get into this just a little bit with the formations and all that as we get a throw in here early on. And this one down into the corner, this is Doyle. He's the captain. Where's that 10 shirt? His coach tells him he is very creative, likes to go to goal. Good off the ball as well as a dynamic runner, and he can be very, very dangerous. This one deflects out of play for our first restart here in this one. Let's first talk about the Webster Grove Statesman. Again, they come into this one 23-3, and fifth time to the state Final Four as East will play this one across the back. They start with a formation of a 4-1-4-1. It'll be Luka Zarki. He's the 6-2 senior goalie. He got the clean sheet yesterday. And that win came out right at the end, took a little bit of a knock. Missed the last half a minute or so of the contest, but he will be the anchor in the back. He's wearing that all-purple goalkeeper uniform. Nifty little breakout down this near side now for East. East has tremendous speed, so we'll have to watch that. Across the back, the four, Jack Lewis, the second. We'll see him with that headband. He wears the five shirt. He just touched that ball there. It's Riley Myhill, the 14 shirt, and Max Warnicke, 26 in the middle, and Will Kopp on the outside, the 6'1 senior in the middle. That lone kind of almost offensive striker, that's Jameson Peplo. He got things started for them yesterday with the goal. The next four in the middle, Jake Clifton, Jonas Osterley, Branion Hurd, and Javi Baker. Branion got the assist. And then up top, we saw him earlier, Oliver Doyle. 13 goals, 7 assists on in the season for the 5'11 senior. Now here's a breakout. They're going to try to go the other way with it. It's a 1v5 situation right now for Webster, but they're bringing some numbers in the next tier. Still with a little bit of space out here on this near side. Here's an opportunity. He'll chip this one to the far side, headed away easily by the defense, but not out of danger. Here's a shot this with the left foot. It's blocked again by the defense. They're continuing to battle for it. Here's another opportunity for Webster. Can they get anyone on the end of it? Keeper off his line. He'll get that one as we are just about two minutes into the contest. Let's go the other way this time now for 
the Bears of East Kansas City, 4-3-3 formation from their head coach, Gerzo Guerrero. In the back, Elias Perez gets to start once again as he kind of gives that one away, albeit momentarily. Their typical goalkeeper, Hassani, Shakuru Hassani, he was out yesterday. He's out again today after an illness, and so he is unable to participate and knows that he would love to be there for his team. Webster now on the attack once again. They get it into the box. Here's an opportunity to the right side of the six, still to the touchline. They cross it back, an opportunity tipped away. Shot blocked right there in the box. Still an opportunity up in the air. Keeper off his line. It's knocked away from him by his own player, but Webster trying to get possession, cannot do so. Finally rides out of play on that far side. So a lot of action in the box early for East Kansas City. Maybe a little bit of nerves as the defender and the goalkeeper not on the same page, but they were able to ride it out of play on that far side. Across the back in this 4-3-3 formation, it's M. Simbi, Amunga, Yuseni Amunga. He is one of the captains. He wears the 21 shirt, a 6-2 senior. Musafari Ibunga, he wears number six. You'll see him all over the field. He's a good one for them. 5'7 junior and Omar Shabani, the number four shirt. This one back towards midfield. Quickly won there nicely by East. Now they're going to try a counterattack right through the middle. A couple players go to ground. No foul. Referee right on top of it. And the possession stays with East Kansas City before it rolls out of bounds on the far side. Charlie Pesci, he's a 5'8 senior. He's on the outside. The other outside is Abdulmuni Abdallah. He's one of the captains. Wears number 20. Webster on the attack now into the box. Opportunity now as it squirts towards the 12. This one knocked away by the defense. And this is Mbumbe. He gives it away. Webster on the attack. Once again, Mbumbe, maybe their most active player, wears the 17 shirt. You'll see him in those blue boots as well. Captain's armband. He's got the ball right now. He'll try to distribute. Can't quite get it to where he wants it to go. But he plays in the middle of the park. And then that 6'4 junior, he's got good size as well. So easy one to pick out, throwing now for the Bears. Both teams might settle in a little bit. East again, first time ever in the Final Four. They acquitted themselves nicely. 2-0 victory, and Perez got that clean sheet as well. This one into the middle. Coming back nicely is Lewis. Lewis likes to get forward, so he'll do a lot of running today. He'll have to backtrack. Let's talk about those front three. First of all, Eusebe Bioki. He's got 27 goals on the season, 11 assists. He scored one yesterday. Actually, 29 goals on the season for that young man. Then it's Myson Victor in the middle. He's kind of their forward, number 19. All three of these forwards will mix around and go in different places. And then Jackson Twizermana, 28 goals on the season. He got the second one yesterday. So those are your lineups for both of these squads. Is that ball is won by the Bears. Just a little over five minutes into this contest. Nil-nil is our score as we start our broadcast off. Let me remind everybody now. This is a keepsake. So once it's completed, go ahead and click that download button. That'll take you to the purchase page, and you can buy this piece of Misha content forever. You own it in perpetuity. It'll be yours. Put it on a flash drive. Put it on your hard drive, whatever you want to do. But you can own this keepsake. Make a great gift for the holidays. So those are coming up here in very short order. It will be Thanksgiving next Thursday, less than a week away. Into the middle now, they give that one away. We've seen East give away a number of passes so far. Again, might be a little big game nerves. Biggest stage the school has played on in terms of soccer. First time ever to the Final Four, and they make it to the state title on the back of a 201. Now here's an opportunity for Webster. Can they bury? Great save by Perez. He stood his ground, and he went slightly to his right as he had to. Point blank range that time for Clifton. And the 5'9 freshman was looking for his fifth goal of the season. Couldn't quite convert on that one. You're not going to get a better opportunity, that's for sure. But you got to give all the credit in the world to Elias Perez. He made four big saves yesterday, and that was a huge one here early in this match. Let's see if that doesn't calm some of the nerves for the Bears. This one off the side of the foot goes out of play in that big fan section almost a student section for the webster grove statesman on that far side again they have packed the entire grandstand down here to the left of midfield all the way down to the end so a lot of statesman fans on top on tap here excuse me at the soccer park and you start to talk about webster just a couple of miles east on highway 44 which runs adjacent to the soccer park here in fenton 
that's easy travel for them, easy travel day. Of course, East Kansas City, they'd have to come four hours -ish to get here to the soccer park. And it's a cold day. Not as cold as yesterday, though, so we'll see how these teams settled in. Good tackle there. It'll be a foul. Referee will blow this one dead, and actually it's going to it'll be a throw-in. Stay right here on this near side. With Norbert M. Simbi into the middle as they try and attack now. Now we will get a foul. They'll get a free kick, so good opportunity here. Sometimes a few restarts, a couple of these set pieces. That's what can allow a team to settle in. And Boombe, he'll be the one to direct traffic out there. You see him wearing those bright blue boots. He's a, one of the easier ones to pick out on the pitch along with Clifton on the other side with the bright green boots. Here's one to the ground. This one just rising all the time, high up over the top of the goal, but good opportunity there. Just put it down, had that half yard of space, decided to have a go at it. That was Bioki, and that shot goes a little off target. Now they'll try and go the other way. It's intercepted space now. These are the Bears into the offensive end. Couldn't quite convert as they got it into the box. Now we'll get a foul going the other way. Fans excited to be part of this one. It's cold, but they've come out today to support their squads. And Here's the long ball towards the box. This one skips past the defenders. They'll knock it back out of there the other way. This is Baker. Can't quite... Get past the defender, but he does win the throw in on that far side. I want to thank both of the coaches, Coach Belton and Coach Guerrero, taking the time this week to provide some information on their players and on their teams and on their programs, and that always helps us during our, our lead up to the contest. free kick now and you'll see this maybe a little bit different than what you might be used to with a lot of soccer matches especially at the varsity level but the goalkeeper Perez does not take them and they'll have a defender back there to take it this slot ball through can they get on the end of it good speed by the defense they have four defenders back the whole time and collectively we're able to shut that one down this is Baker he's knocked down he'll draw the foul right near midfield couple times the East Bears have pled their case to the referee he's only going to let that go on so long before he'll issue a red card especially in the manner the aggressive manner that they're doing it a foul here coming out this will go with East Webster Grove School, just slightly over 1,000 students, almost 900, just short of 900 for East Kansas City, so about the same size. Tackle on the far side, player went to ground, he got right back up, they win the throw and does East. And they'll restart it from there. Nifty little move to get around one defender. They got some numbers for where they tried to slot it through that time to Mbombe, but it was beyond his outstretched boot. One of the things we noticed from the Webster Grove Statesman yesterday, they can play. They like to play the ball to feet, keep possession, try and unlock some of the forwards, look for Doyle, look for players like Hurd and Osterley to be very involved, along with Peplo. They'll play a lot through the middle and then try and quickly get it to the outside to create some advantage. Near side now. They try to work that one to Pesci. He can't get on the end of it. This one to Doyle. Doyle lets it run past him right into the teeth of the defense. This one slotted through on the run. Keeper off his line. Good side is, size is Luke Azarki, 6'2", senior. His coach says he's one of the best keepers he's coached. 
and had the chance to instruct with the ball at his feet. This one, he came off his line to grab it. One of the captains. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. <laughs> Battle for the ball here in the middle of the park. That one goes right back over to East. Nothing to do in that time for Webster. They'll build it back the other way. Will East just as Pesci. Middle of the park. He's going to go back to the middle. He's got a man front running into the box. Opportunity shot. Goal! They're going to pull it back, though. There was an offside on the play. That'll be our first offsides call, but that was an exciting buildup and a slot ball, so Webster's going to have to watch that. We talked about the speed of East at the top of the broadcast, and that was a pure example of that. He was just probably a yard or so offside. Good trap by the defense playing that higher line, but when you do that, you are vulnerable to the through ball, especially with the speedy team and the counterattack. This is Webster on the buildup, on the counterattack themselves. Into the box now. Knocked away, but not out of danger. Webster will always have one or two players right in the middle. Nifty little move there. They'll play it off to the right, left side. Excuse me. This is Baker. He gets on the end of it. Tries to push it into the six-yard box. Can't quite get it there. Defense wanted an offside call on that previous play. They did not get it. Now here's the throw in this one. Into the box. Webster Grove still battling for it. Finally back out towards midfield. East had brought a number of players back, and they didn't have everybody out there to corral it. Long ball again. Niftedly knocked away. That was Amunga. Now we'll get a foul. And Mbube will take the time to set this one up. Allow a couple of players to get forward. Now he's going to launch this one into the box. That wind held it up just a little bit. You'll notice the flags next time we go back to that camera angle. They're in your, they'll be in your top corner of the left side of your screen, and you'll see how stiffly they're blowing. Here's a little give and go. Players not on the same page that time. Perlow and Osterley. And Hurd also in the mix. We'll switch fields with it this time. Create some space. This is Bioke. Pesci on the overlapping run. Tries to beat the defender still with the ball at his feet. He'll launch this to the opposite side of the box. Header. Keeper has to go low to his right side. He makes a huge save. Point blank range. That's what you want to do. You want to put it low away from a taller keeper, and it was a great header, but the keeper made a great play. This one deflects. See if the keeper can hold it from going out of play. He does just that. So big save that time by Zarki and Good build up again for the Bears. They've been dangerous. Had one offsides call. Now the keeper was called upon there to come up with a huge save. Over 1,700 minutes for Luka Zarki this season. He's got those 12 shutouts. Over 100 saves. He's given up just eight goals on the season. And he has kept it clean all the way through the postseason. 8-0 against Windsor, 7-0 against Lutheran South, and the big match against Rockwood Summit. They win that one in PKs, 1-0. So kept the clean sheet there. And then Notre Dame from Cape Girardeau, 4-0. And then, of course, yesterday against the defending Class 2 champion, Whitfield. A couple of players checking into the match here. Claude Bailey, one of them, out here on the near side. Also just checking in a moment ago is Luke O'Neill. He just had the ball. Our own Banty, I'm sorry, just had the ball. This will drift on the far side and go out of play. Henry Utterson also checking in. Long ball now, far side. They'll try and keep it in, unable to do that. Brendan Cruz also checking in for Webster and... Matthew DeGarmo. DeGarmo had a good run out, had an opportunity to really put the game away yesterday, just missed out on it. You'll bet he'll be chomping at the bit to try and get another one. 
several players by it how far that ball up in the air. Finally, Webster comes away with it, but good defense. Standing tall right on the sideline on that far side. This players battle for the ball, breaking out. It's East. A little through ball there from this time. Still on the move, little heel flick. They try to get the through ball once again. They push it in there. Webster playing that high line right at the top of the box, so that can be very effective in making sure you thwart the attack the whole time, but you got to be aware of that through ball, and we saw yesterday with the speed of East, that's what they're very good at. This is Mbunga. Webster now with a little space in the middle, closing it down quickly is the East defense. On the move now to the side of the box, knocked off the ball, they'll go the other way. But Webster wins it right back. Referee standing right there, said no foul. Here's a shot from well out. Good block, though. There's another opportunity. Webster can't quite get it in there. So this is kind of a bend-don't-break defense so far from East. This will result now in our first corner kick here of the match. Sue's going to take it over there. Looks like it will be a team of Osterley and Hurd. Osterley, 14 assist on the season. Hurd, 7 assist on the season. He had the assist on the, the goal yesterday. Now, Bears trying to break out. They're at midfield already. Take no time. Now they're going to run past the first line of defenders. But good collection by Webster Groves. They try and go to the front. This is intercepted on the box. Here's a shot, this one high up over the top of the bar. Here's Pesci. Dummy run by him. Intercepted. Here's Webster Groves. They can't keep possession. That went under the boot of Osterley. He was very involved in the match yesterday. Really a catalyst for them. It's back to the keeper. Dangerous ball, though. He's got to come off his line in the win. Playing a little bit of a an issue with that one as he tried to clear it. Back to midfield. This is Cruz. He'll distribute out the far side. No one going to be able to get on the end of it. This one high up over the top of the grandstand on the far side. We got a little bit of a slowdown. Substitution coming in now for the statesman, Jack Armstrong. He's a junior, six foot. Given a few instructions that he got from the coaching staff. We're waiting for the ball to come back into play. They finally get it. So this will go to the statesman right in front of their student section on that far side. You know, Webster Groves would love to get that third title. East Kansas City said, we're playing for the pride of our school. We want to make everybody proud at East Kansas City High School. And they are putting on a show so far. They've had a couple of opportunities. Both teams really well acquitted, going offensive. They want to get in there and get that winner. Now, down the line, this is Cruz. Tries to get to the side of the box. Instead, goes to the touchline. Does get to the touchline. One-on-one -on -one with the defender. They ride it, and it goes out of play. It'll result in the goal kick. So, Good battle right down there. Nice. <laughs> Long ball well up over the top of midfield. This one given away. Here's per uh, excuse me, Pesci on the counter. Tries a slot ball again on this near side. He had a step that time, but good play by Lewis. He's a 5'9 senior, Jack Lewis the second. We saw him make a lot of runs down the right side yesterday. He likes to get forward. His coach talks about his aggressiveness, and he gives up 
the first corner now for East Kansas City. This will be a left-footed boot swinging away from the goal. Let's see if anybody can get on the end of this one. Towards the six-yard. Flicked on by Pesci, and it's deflected. And, boy, Webster dodged a huge bullet there. They almost deflected it into their own goal. It was a power header from Pesci. He got a lot behind that one. Flicked it on towards the goal, and it just went wide off the deflection. Same ball again. This one out of there by the Statesman defense, but quickly gathered up, and they're going to go for a cross towards the 12-yard spot. This one diving header. Keep it right there to grab that one. It was directed towards the goal, but really didn't have much power on it and easily grabbed by Zarki. He's going to take his time and tell everyone to get back towards midfield. This one flicked on. Webster with some opportunity. Players forward now. This is Cruz. He's knocked off the ball. and Webster trying to win that one, trying to settle it down. A lot of the First touches for both of these teams. Maybe the ball getting a little further away from them than we saw yesterday. Wind is variable. Different points in time so far in the match. It's been breezy coming in from left to right. But this is Pesci now. I've been impressed. He has been way more involved than he was yesterday. Nifty move for him. Now he's going to try and beat the defender. Gets past one. He weaves his way. There's four defenders. Lays this one off. Opportunity now. He gets it back. Top of the box. Can he get that half yard for a shot? Instead, he's going to try and slot it. They still have possession. So he's had a great work rate. Now the referee's going to blow it dead. He'll call the foul. Actually, it's going to be an offside call. So that'll be the second offside call here of the match for East Kansas City. Just a little over 15 minutes left here in this first half of action. It's been good back and forth. Both keepers have had to come up with saves and be on their toes. On the move now, here come the Statesmen. Played the space back to their back line. Now they'll feed it into the hole. That one intercepted. Pass wasn't quite where he needed it to be off the boot of Cruz. It's good feed into the hole. This time gets past the defender. An opportunity now for the Bears. Try to get it to Peplo. He can't handle it now. Other side. Opportunity again. Here is East Kansas City. This one directed on goal. And Boombay raises his hand. He said, okay, guys, I know it. That was supposed to be a cross, not a shot. Went too far to the keeper. Again, here are the statesmen on the build-up. They got an overlapping run here. Instead, they try and go right back up the middle, and it's easily gathered up. Peplo with the ball. He was the goal scorer yesterday. Nothing new in there for the statesmen as they try to get it to Bailey. Now they're going to front run. He's on side, into the side of the box. Could have went to ground. Does not. Through the keeper's legs. Goal! And the referee's flag stayed down. That's the first goal of the contest. And with 14.07 remaining, the East Kansas City Bears have jumped on top in this one. It was a great individual effort. He got past the defender. Defender went down. He did not go down with him. Touched it and goes right past the keeper. The goal to Twizermana as he gets it from yesterday. Assist on that one. Goes to the number eight shirt, Rivera. So Twizermana gets his second one of the final four here to put his squad on top. One to nil with 14. 07 remaining. And now Webster. They're going to have to go get it a little bit. Well, they're dangerous. We talked about that speed, and that was a great individual effort. Once that slot pass came through, the defender went to ground. Thought he went to ground a little early. Might have been called for a foul had the East player gone down as well. And that was Twizermana on Rivera gets the assist. So great effort there, and that opens the book on this one. 
Well, we had that class one championship game earlier. That one left it late. Just about two minutes remaining in the contest before we finally saw a tally in that one. Doyle checks back in now for Webster Groves. He's one of their talisman. 13 goals on the season for him. He had an early opportunity in this one. It finally looks like East has settled down. They looked a, maybe a little bit nervous early in the contest and some passes not going where they wanted to. Marking not quite where it should have been and they gave up a couple early chances but Perez made a great save on a point blank shot earlier as well and so they've been able to finally settle in and offensively they get the first one of the match. This one tipped out of play. 12.45 remaining here. First half action. Let me remind everybody now, once the contest is over, you can own this piece of Misha content forever. Click on the download button and go to the purchase page. Right there you can buy this state championship action and you can own it forever. It makes a great keepsake. This would be quite a story. I think Coach Guerrero knows the gravity of what this would mean for his school and his team. Not a lot of people expected them to be there. You talk about this squad. They have uh, they have won 13 on the trot, 17 games in a row undefeated. It's a tie in their way back in late September. They have to you have to go back to September 10th uh, for their last loss. That was against Glendale, a team that they beat yesterday. The only other loss early in the year to Blue Spring South. Checking back into the match for Webster Groves is Clifton. Throwing now, this is a long one for Lewis. Knocked out of there by the defense and East is just content to boot it all the way back towards midfield. I'll try and get it down here to the corner. That'll slide and go out of play over the end line. So that'll result in another corner kick, the second for Webster Groves here in this first half. Clifton and Osterley checking back in, as is Baker and Warnicke. So they all get a nice little rest. They're ready for that last, this last 11 minutes. Here's a long ball to the backside. Keeper off his line, can't get a hold of it. A couple of players battled for the ball. It went down to the ground right at the edge of the six, and there's the keeper. Great play by him. Stay on top of things. He missed the ball, though. Webster had the opportunity with him out of the goal, but could not capitalize. Midfield now, this one flicked on to the defense. This is my hill. This ball ricochets all the way back into the goal box. So Zarki has to collect it. Good run by Baker on the far side. Gets past a couple of players now. Webster with players in the box. Can't capitalize just yet. Still battling for it. Webster still with possession. They've got one more player open out here on the near side. This is Clifton. One-on-one -on -one with the defender. Overlapping runner. Gets to the touchline. Slots it across. This will deflect and go out of play. Another restart for them here on the set piece. On the corner kick. Third corner kick here this first half. This one will swing away from the goal. This is Osterley. 14 assists on the season. Let's see what he tries to target. Towards the far side of the six, comes down on the ground. Here's a shot blocked. Let's see, they have another go. Here's one towards the goal. He tried to guide that one in there off the bounce. That was my hill coming forward. And I think he was a little indecisive in what he wanted to do. Finally decided to have a go, but by that point, he couldn't really get any power behind it. And he was leaning back, and it launches high and wide of the target. So with 918 remaining, restart, and this one's boomed into the wind. Like taking out that two iron and hitting that low liner into a breeze. That's exactly what he did there. Here they come once again. Webster Grove Statesman on the move. He's got a player over here on the right side. Didn't see him making the slot run. That was Clifton again, but they still have possession. This is Osterley. He's knocked off the ball. Peplo, Baker. Got it. Got it. And then here they are once again. All the way to my hill. A 
Webster's had their opportunities. This is a game by no stretch of the imagination over as far as they're concerned. The referee's going to play possession here on this one. Webster goes into the box. Shot. This one deflects, and this will go and drift. Out of play here on this near side. Baker went to ground. He's going to be okay, though. Took a little bit of a knock there on that one. As the Statesman quickly get it in, they'll have another throw in right here on this near side. Actually, he's going to call a foul, so this will be a set piece. He'll get his 10 feet and commit a couple players forward now. Let's see if they don't get some size into the box. Five players to the far side, one to the near, and then one in towards the goal. This is Osterley again. He'll line this to the top of the six, headed away by the defense, deflected. Let's see, he's going to have it go again. This is my hill. This time he decides to collect the ball, and he's going to chip it to the far side. Looked for Baker, couldn't get it to him. Still, Webster Groves on the hunt. This is Hurd. He had the assist on that goal yesterday for Peplo. This is Baker. Now he'll launch it to this 12-yard spot, deflected away by the defense. They finally get it out of there. Who's going to get on the end of it? And it will be East. Let's see if they don't have a counterattack. They're going to make a couple of long runs. Ball at his feet, just a little bit too far away from him for Bioki, but they get possession back. Far side now, opportunity. They've got just three players up, but they're causing problems. Lewis, scissor kicks it out of there. Now the ref is going to bring it back. We've got another offside. That'll be the third here this first half for the East Bears. My Hill boots this one long down the line, headed away nicely by the Bears. That'll go out of play, though, and allow Webster to collectively move forward and have the restart on the throw-in. Good intercept there by the defense for East. Webster, though, continuing the battle on that far side. They've got possession back over the sideline, out of play once again, throw-in for the Statesman. And we're going to have a player down, so the referee's going to blow this one dead. It's like we'll have a stoppage here, stop the clock. Maybe it wasn't. A, nonetheless, he's going to leave the player then. He come all the way back here. They're going to have a foul in the, coming out. And we'll restart. Here we go. This one back towards Webster Grove penalty box. Brought down there. And they've been dangerous with those three and four players up at the front. That's why they can get past players quickly. They have good footwork. Collectively, they make nice runs. One headed away by the defense and east back towards midfield. They flick this one on. Here's my hill. Lewis back to my hill. Both of them wearing those bandanas. Karate kid style, if you will. He's come back in vogue after 40 years. Far side now on the attack. Here's east to the side of the box. They'll pull back. Again, just three or four players in the attack, but that's worked for them so far. They'll get this one into the goalkeeper. Zarki right there. He's going to take his time and wait for his players to get back towards midfield. Four and a half minutes remaining here. First half action, one to nil in this one. It was a goal with 14.07 remaining here in this first half. By Twizzer Mana. Left side now, who launches to the far side of the box, past everyone. Can they track it down before it goes out of play? They do. That is the Bears of East High School. 
Webster defense gets it out of there, though. Now they'll push it back towards midfield. They try to get that one to Doyle. Doyle operating as the lone front-running striker. Webster's constantly got three or four in the attack right in kind of a line behind him, but he is no <coughs> he is the front man. It'll give a go on that far side. Webster can't stay with it. It'll drift and go out of play, and so that'll result in a throw in deep in their own end for the Bears. I'm talking about some of the strengths. Coach Guerrero said, you know, that we had, it took us a while to get the team to really buy into what we wanted to do. We feel like our strength is our coaching. He's got a very deep staff that's very dedicated, and the players finally did, and they worked with them and worked with them. They got the system put in place that they wanted to run with this particular group of boys. And they have proven that that tactic was a good one. And that strategy overall has worked for them. They're here 22-1 and one on the season. Again, you got to go all the way back to September 10th. They lost to Glendale 1-0. to nil. They avenged that loss yesterday in the semifinal. And now here they are today with an opportunity to win the school's first ever championship, and they're up one to nil as we approach halftime. Two and a half minutes remaining now. They try a through ball there. Does the Bears do the Bears? Can't. Good win. Here they come again. Long ball into the box. This will drift and go out of play. Never really got around on it. As Zarki will take the goal kick now. We'll just distribute it to the other side. My Hill. Webster Groves. Fans still getting into this one. They know there's still another 40 minutes remaining. They got an opportunity now as we approach the half. They'll put it on his left foot. Does he get a shot? He does. Lowell on the turf. Perez right there. Good play by Elias Perez. He stood his ground. Came to the top of the six-yard box. Cut down the angle enough. Good run by Doyle that time. Again, he's dangerous. He makes those long runs, and that time he put himself in a position to at least have a go at goal, and the defender was collapsing on him all time. He's got a half a step past him, but shot didn't quite have the power he wanted to, and the goalkeeper was right there for it, so... One minute remaining now here in this first half of action. One to nil. We have that goal. 14.07 remaining, and it has stood up so far. Come out here on the near side. This is Bioki. Tries to go the other way with it. Good defense. Again, that high line from Webster Groves paying dividends for them. Other way now. That was Osterley's knocked off and still with the ball. Excuse me. Here's Peplo. His pass behind Baker. Let's see if they can retrieve it before it goes out of play. They do. Now here is Baker once again. He's got those yellow boots on. Now we'll get a foul going in. Opportunity now, 20 seconds. Webster not with a lot of time. Let's throw everybody forward. Referee's going to stop the clock here with 17 seconds remaining. He's going to give Webster the opportunity to get this restart. It's like we're going to have to get a substitution in here. Shaking up on the play. they got a player shaking on the play. They're going to have a trainer come on out. And the referee's going to say that you do have to come off because we stopped the clock. And he's trying to stay in the match, but the referee's not going to let him stay in the match. He's saying you have to go off. They're not. East does not have a player in. Now they finally bring a player in off the bench. Abwe comes in. Crispin Abwe. Six foot junior. As my son Victor. Next 
goes to the bench. Now, 17 seconds remaining. Not sure why Webster wouldn't throw everybody in the box. But they decide not to. Here's one launched towards the six. Couple players there. Keeper off his line. Can't get it. Scissor kick. Does it get in the back of the goal? Not yet. Scrum for the ball right on the goal line. No one able to get it. Finally, I think the keeper gets it. Referee goes in there to see what's in the bottom of the scrum, but Webster had a couple shots at it. And that'll do it, folks, for the first half. The clock winds out. We'll go to halftime. And East Kansas City with the lead, 1-0. to nil. Perez, not sure if he was shaking up on that one. I think he's going to be okay. He's a little dazed, but he has the ball underneath him. And as he makes that save, we go to halftime. Webster had the opportunity, could not convert. And the score remains 1-0 to nil with East Kansas City on top. We're going to take a break. When we come back on the other side of this one, we'll have that second half of action. You are watching Missouri State High School soccer action on the Misha.tv network. You kidding me? And the Norwood Pirates have their first ever state title. Jackson, oh, it goes. For the first time in nine years, the trophy goes back to Chesterfield. Got one in this one, make it to Annika Holtor.
We are at halftime here of the Missouri State Boys Class 3 Soccer Championships, and it's East High School from Kansas City on top of Webster Groves, 1-0. First ever trip to the Final Four for East, and they right now are 40 minutes away from winning their first ever state championship. So we'll see how this plays out. Both teams back out there. The officials are back out there as well. Let's go through some stats in that first half. The one lone goal went to East. They also had a, uh, another shot on goal. Elias Perez, he had to come up with a big save at the end of the first half. He faced two shots, saved both of them. Six total shots for Webster and four for East Kansas City. Corner kicks, three to Webster Groves, two to East Kansas City, and fouls, four for Webster and five for East Kansas City. So that's how this all shakes out. East Kansas City only used two subs in that first half, five subs in that first half for Webster Groves, and we are underway here in this second half. Webster Groves moving from right to left. Not sure why they, they blow it dead right away. We'll reset the clock and restart it here. Back to 40 minutes. And here comes that restart again. They're going to launch this one long. This time it'll go down that far side. Drift up over the top of everyone and out of play. For the throw in. East Kansas City now. Clouds starting to move in here a little bit. It was a bright, sunny, uh, sh sunshiny day. That wind is still pretty heavy, coming uh, about 10 miles an hour from the north. That means left to right on your computer screen, so Webster Grove's going into the wind. Temperature holding at 39 degrees as we start the second half. Opportunity now for the Statesman. In on goal. Does he have an opportunity shot? Saved by Perez again. This time it was Baker in all alone. That's the second time that Perez has had to come up big with a Webster Groves player bearing down, and now he is shaken up. Referee's going to go over and check him out as this ball goes out of play for the throw-in, but that was a great slot ball. Baker may be shaken up slightly as well. He's holding his back. He's going to be able to come off to this side, and he's going to stay in the match. Keeper staying in the match as well, and great opportunity. It was a great slot ball. Webster had an opportunity, several opportunities, excuse me, early on in that first half. They could not capitalize, and here they nearly equalized with that great through ball. Throw in, though, for the Statesman. Left side of our camera angle. And they're going to go to the side of the box. This is Doyle. Doyle with the defender in his hip pocket, and he wins the corner kick. So first corner kick here this second half for the Statesman. Coming over to take it will be Osterly. Osterly took a number of those corner kicks in the first half. They had three of them. This will be a right-footed boot swinging back in towards the keeper. We'll see if the wind plays a factor. They can also use the option of going short. As Hurd has come out to stand in next to the, the corner kick. This one booted back towards the six, and it's high up over the top. So Baker with another opportunity there. That time rose above everyone. About five yards from the goal line. It popped it right over the top of the bar. Keeper did not make much of a reaction. So had that been on frame, I think they would have nodded it. They had their second opportunity now. You know, just like in that first half, East starting a little bit unsteady. They were able to right the ship. Eventually got that go-ahead goal with 14.07 remaining. Took them about five minutes or so, though, to settle in before they were able really to get some traction. This is my hill. He'll play one long down this near sideline. I'll go into the Webster Groves bench as the sun pep pops back out again. If there's going to be one factor outside of the wind environmentally, it could be the shadows. It would go into the keeper's eyes coming from this particular near side near the Webster Groves bench. That's the one area where the sun could play a factor. You see how those shadows are cast from right to left. Full stretch now into the offensive end. Here's Baker once again. He's been a factor a couple opportunities early on. Tries to feed it to Doyle. Doyle putting some pressure on the ball. Gives it away. This is Baker. 
one-on-one with the defender. Good defending there, and they'll break back out towards midfield. Center of the park. This is Hurd. He'll switch and go the other way. Still with the ball. Defeat is Clifton, the freshman. He'll give it up. This is Peplo. Peplo's through ball. Intercepted now. Counterattack time for the East Bears. They're knocked off of it. This is Pesci. Pesci played a really nice ball game in the first half. He was a catalyst for them. Now he'll have a go from well out. This one will go wide of the target, though. Good opportunity for him. Shot goes wide of the target. Keeper had it covered all the way, but that was a 30-yard run for Pesci with the ball. So he cut it back to the middle and then just rivals it low to the left side of the keeper. This is Mbumbe. He was highly involved in the match yesterday. Not quite as much of a total influence on it today as he had yesterday, but he has been good. Again, he's one of the captains, wears those bright blue shoes. Those boots are easy to make out. And Yesterday he was all over the ball. Today maybe trying to take some of that offense away, playing in a slightly more defensive role. And you watch his posture and his positioning right now. Going to follow him in the middle of the field. He is trying to almost man mark a little bit to make sure they don't get numbers down. This one tipped away, but Webster right in there behind it again. Outside, they try to get it to Baker. Baker will get on the end of it. Defender right there. He'll push him in the back. He's going to be called for the infraction. This will result now in a set piece. Osterley once again. Very dangerous here. Let's see if he doesn't have a go with this one. This is where that sun could play a factor. Seven in the box for Webster Groves. Everybody back in behind the ball for East Kansas City. Wind could play a bit of an issue with the ball as well. This one swinging to the fourth stick. High up in the air is Baker once again. This one pops down and goes right up over the top of the bar. That will result in a goal kick. So all the offensive pressure so far been put on by Webster Groves and the Statesmen here in this second half. Baker has been involved in three very good scoring of chances. Square ball now to the middle. Good speed through the midfield for East. This one up in the air right near the Webster Groves bench. That will result in a throw in now for East Kansas City. This one headed away, albeit briefly. That's Cop. This is Warnicky And Cop again. They'll go back one more time. They'll reload with Myhill. Long ball from Myhill trying to go up top to Doyle. Here's Baker again. Tries to weave his way past a couple of defenders to flex out of play. It will result in a throw in now for East. This one does deflect to Doyle. He's got two defenders in front of him. He'll take the shot. Goes far to the post. Diving to make the save again is Perez to his left this time. He's had to come up big late in the first half and now here again early in the second half. And that time, Doyle seeing eye shot to the far corner. And Perez was equal to the task. Again, he's been called upon in this final four because the starting goalkeeper, Shakuru Hassani, has been sick and unable to go. So... Coaches wanted to make sure we give him a shout-out. We want to say hello to him. Knowing his players are trying their best to do this for their teammate as well. That's what good teams do. They play for each other. As Baker puts this one back over midfield, Perez way off of his line. Just kind of pops it right back up towards midfield. This headed right back in by Webster. Keeper way off his line, but this one gathered in, and here comes East again. That was a boom bay. 
Let's throw a little drift. Never really made it into play. Bounced on the line. Then drifts out of play on that far side. And checking into the lineup now. Donut Kenya. He's going to spell. I said Victor. Victor take a little bit of a knock in that first half. So. Hard foul on the far side. Referee's going to stop the clock. We're going to get our first yellow card here. So Pesci's going to have to come off. Pesci will get the first yellow card of the match. Quick restart, though. Referee's not going to allow that because the player had not subbed out yet. Pesci's still on the pitch. So he has not come out of the match. So now they are going to make him come out of the match, and they're going to have to sub him out. And Simbi is coming back in. He started the match. Where's that 22 shirt? Opportunity for Webster Groves on the restart now. Eight and a half minutes into the second half. Lofts this one towards the 12-yard spot. Webster Groves get on the end of it again. And no one able to gather it. But they do have possession again to the Statesman, albeit briefly. This one just scissors kicked well out over midfield. This will drift and go all the way back down towards Zarki. And he plays it out here to the near side. This is Cop. Back to my hill. Forward again into the hole. This is Doyle. Trying to through ball, gets past the defender on that far side. Clifton's working on one-on-one -on -one with the defender. Good tackle there. This will drift and go out of play. Let's see if Webster doesn't try and get a long throw into the box. Baker has been very good in the air so far, winning the ball, just has been unable to direct it on goal. There is a longer throw towards the side of the box. Skims off the defender's head, out of play. Second corner kick here of the half, or excuse me. Yeah, second corner kick of the half, excuse me, for Webster Groves. Just over 30 minutes remaining. Webster Groves trying to get that equalizer. Here's one to the top of the box. They've deflected in towards the goal. Perez right there once again as it was guided towards the keeper. Coming forward to make that play that time was Cop as he was able to deflect it on goal, but Perez was right there. Pesci coming back into the match, coming out of the match. Is Abwe. Crispin came on late in that first half. Immediately try to go to Pesci. Can't quite get on the end of it. Try to pass it back to him again. Nothing doing. This one up over the top. Let's see if Baker can't utilize. He's got enough speed to get to some space. He does utilize it. Puts the ball in space. Puts it on his right foot. Tries to shimmy shake one defender. Gets it on his left foot now. He'll launch this one across. Over the top of Perez. It hits off the back of the post. Well, the keeper misjudged it that time. Maybe the first mistake Perez has made. But he gets bailed out by the goalie's best friend. The goalkeeper's best friend. The post. And it deflected off of the post. And went away from the goal instead of into the goal. And Baker, what does he have to do to get a goal in this second half? What does that young man have to do? He's been stopped from point blank range. He hit one just over the top with a header, and now he hits the post on a BB from the far side. You know, the good goal scorers would say, you just keep going at it. This time, it's to Baker again, into the box. Tries to bring it down. A couple of defenders in his hip pocket. There's another one. 
Goes to ground. He's still got the ball at his feet. Tries to get past one. It'll be a deflection. Should go out of play. This should result now in a corner kick. Referee's going to come in and make sure there's going to be no extracurricular activity. He's going to bring a couple of players over and say, we want to talk to a couple of you. No card. And it looks like we're we going to have a drop kick. Now we are going to stop the clock, and now we are going to get, and I think this one's going to be for descent after the play. And this, again, we talked about this in the first half. There was a lot of complaining to the referee about calls, and now they're going to get a penalty kick. Or are they going to get an indirect kick? He has not shown a yellow. It is going to be an in. It's going to be a goal kick now. Okay. And now the Webster team can't believe it. So we stopped the clock. We're going to punch the clock back in. No yellow card. Webster fans infuriated with that decision. Nonetheless, ball back in play midfield. Near side now. Here's Cop. Tries to beat one defender. Can't do it. This one. Into the front. Here's Osterley. A little bit of space. Let's see if he has a go. He will have a go. Shot well out. Cole Osterley. 27-32 remaining in this second half. And he equalizes. And it was an individual effort. He cut across his body. Back to the near post. And the keeper had no chance. He side netted that one. 27-32 remaining in the second half. And Osterley is not at the game at one apiece. The all-conference performer does it there. And, you know, the coach glowed about his passing ability. Well, that time he takes the shot. And it was a laser into the corner past the outstretched arms of Perez. And it's been all Webster Groves here in this second half. And they finally get that equalizer. And nodded at one apiece. Get an opportunity to see it right here. Watch him cut across his body. No assist on this one. It was all Osterley. Intercepts it. And then watch him make the move. And then back across his body from right to left. And past the outstretched arms of the keeper. No chance whatsoever for Perez. Great individual effort. That's what you like to see in these great big-time championship matches as somebody... With a moment of inspiration. We saw it in the first half with the assist and then the goal for East Kansas City. And now for Webster Groves, you see it here in the second half. It's all for the playing now. 27 minutes remaining here in this one, and we're knotted at one apiece. Now let's see if they can't get back on the front foot. Looks like they might be. This is a Bunga. He'll throw this one over, except for Mbumbe. He'll throw this one towards the goal up over the top, but he's going to get more involved in the offense. He's kind of just sunk in defensively, been more of a defensive midfielder. Gets into the attack. Really, the first time I remember him being that far forward in this match. Here's my hill. Number 11 shirt cop has been very busy in the second half. He was involved in that play right there as well. Up in the air. This one flicked on. That's Warnicky. up in the air again. Baker also been very busy. Referee says no foul there. Doyle tried to grab that one. Heard. This is Osterley, the goal scorer. He gets it to Doyle. Doyle, ball on his right foot. Slots it across. Good defensive play there that time by... The Bears and Webster Groves now a little more energy. They've come out with a little more pep in their step here in the second half. Baker really has been their big catalyst. The number of opportunities. Good play there by Cop to get it back towards midfield. Here's per, or excuse me, Pesci. He was very busy and very active in that first half. Went off on the yellow car. This one slotted through. The player was going to be offside anyway. Keeper calming everything down. He wants his team to get their poise with that Breeze coming right into his face. He'll boom this one back towards midfield. This one flicked on. They're going to try and get it to Baker. He can't run past the defenders. Two defenders right there. He tried to split them. Here's my hill. Can't settle it down. Throw in two east right in front of their own bench. Right, 
All for the taking here in this one now. Not quite ready to say it's a next goal win situation, but that might be the case here in this one. Long ball buck back up over the top. Here we go. Doyle now, one on one with the defender. Tries to slot past him on the right. Good defending, though. Kept everything in front of him now. A little contact on the side of the box. Doyle wins it back. He's got a player in the middle. It's Baker. Goes up over the top of his head beyond everyone. So here's Mbumbe. He's knocked off the ball. Wins the throw in right in front of the Webster bench. Out of play. This will stay with Cop right here on the near side. Some substitutions coming in now. Webster Groves, they are going to get some subs into the match, including DeGarmo. He had a great run out yesterday. Also into the match is Bante. You see me, where's that stocking cap along that back line? He gets the ball, so he'll get an early first touch here. Here's the long ball. They're going to try and target up top this time. This is Cruz. Of course, Doyle getting a little bit of a rest now. And here's Cruz, who just came off the bench, and another player that came off the bench a moment ago, DeGarmo. It's a player did not come off the bench. He goes to ground. Referee's going to blow this one dead. Webster fans wanted a foul on that one. Let's see if they're going to give the foul or is it going to be a throw-in. Headed away right back into the east bench. Here's a boom bay. He'll play it out the far side. A little bit of space now. Let's see if east can't settle down and try and build up something offensively. They have had not many opportunities. A lot of it's been played in the midfield and on their defensive end. But here's a boom bay now. Nearly falls down. Now slots one through. Man, it stopped his run, though. And that'll result in a goal kick. 22 minutes remaining here in this second half. 1-1 <clears throat> is the score. Scoring open, 14-07 remaining in that first half. It was Twizermana getting the goal, his second of the final four. And then with 27-32 remaining in regulation. Brilliant play by Osterley. To equalize, and that's where we stand right now, 1-1. Obumbe can't believe that foul there. He's still telling the ref, what did I do? But referees, again, not changing his mind on this one. So East is going to bring everybody back in behind the ball. Once again, great dangerous opportunity here for the Statesmen. Let's see what kind of set piece they've drawn up. Into the box. Flicked on. No one on the end of it. Good defense. They pop it back up in the air. That's where Baker was so effective here early on in this second half. Banty will track this one down. This is Lewis. Back into the mixer. Knocked away, and now he'll slide this one over the sideline on that far side. Jack Armstrong checking in for Webster Groves. Checking in for East is Abwe. Bumbe is the one coming out. This is interesting. I wonder if he took a little bit of a knock or he needs to get some instruction from his coaching staff or just needs a rest. This one flicked on on the attack for Webster Groves. Knocked out of there. And here's Pesci on the far side. Nope, he's the one perfect. 
Strong tackle on the far side. We got a little bit of contact. Pesci's on the ground. He is shaken up. He doesn't want to come out of the match. The referee still got to stop the clock. He's saying, no, I'm going to be okay. He took a knock on the leg. And now a good opportunity. This would be a good one for East to settle in. They get the set piece. This is where you'd like to have a player like Abumbe out there, but he's on the bench, so. He'll launch this one towards the six. This one skids off the defender's head here on this near side to the corner. And that will result in the first corner kick here of the second half. And just like East did defensively, Webster's doing the same thing. They're going to bring everybody back into the box. They know every opportunity for a scoring chance is important. Looks like we've got some issue happening. This one curling back in towards the keeper. He grabs that one. And an attacker right in there, but Zarki stood strong, used it. Long reach he has, grabs it. Now he's going to tell all his players, let's get back towards midfield. Wynn knocks that one down. Settle. Abdallah tries to feed it to the far side. Now they're going to come back here to the near side. This one up over the top of everyone, and it drifts and goes out of play. So. With 18 minutes remaining here in this second half, 1-1 is our score. We're locked in a good one, folks. Now we are going to get that substitution on. This is Marcos Hernandez. He comes on. He's a senior, 5-7, 8 goals, 2 assists. Another one of the captains comes off the pitch here for East Kansas City. I bet both of those men are going to get some final instructions from their coaches and then get right back out there. Abdallah and Ibumbe, he, they are both very, very key for them in that midfield. Now East wins a restart here in the center circle. Play it back one more time. Now they'll go all the way back near center. Near the center the half line, this one into the box. Zarki off his line easily and gets that one. He'll look things over and push this one all the way back towards midfield. That one cuts through the wind. <laughs> this is Pesci. Not as active as he was in this, as he was in the first half. The second half, he's been a little bit less involved. Of course, he had to go off for the yellow card, so... Checking back in the lineup now for Webster is Hurd. Osterley's going to go to the bench, the goal scorer. He'll get him that one last breather before he gets his final run out here in regulation. Marty Marston, this one into the middle goes past everyone right to Marty, the Bears. Here's Pesci. Collectively good defense for Webster there. Yeah, I'm hearing I'm hearing an air horn someplace across the way. Middle of the park now. This is Hurd. Pushes it forward. Just one lone attacker right now for Webster Groves. Nifty little move though as he tries to work his way to the outside. This is Cruz. He's brought down by the defender. That may result in a card. They'll stop the clock there. That will be a yellow card and Pleading this case to the official on the far side. And now this will be a great opportunity for a restart. Abumbe was going to check back into the match, so. This 
So, and Simbi, he gets the, the yellow card there on that one. This will be a left-footed cross. Six up there for Webster Groves. This one launched towards the six-yard box as well. I think the wind might have held that up a little bit. Now it's knocked out of there. This will result in a throw-in for the Statesman once again. Throwing towards the corner. And this one drifts out of play over the end line. Let me remind everybody now, you can own this piece of Michigan content forever. You can download a copy immediately following the broadcast. You can click on that download button. It'll take you to the purchase page. And right there, you can buy this piece of Misha content forever. It'll be a great keepsake for any of these young men or any of the participants. Baker coming back in the match. Also coming back into the match is Clifton for Webster Groves for this final run out. Ball on the restart now with 14 and a half minutes remaining. This one will go up over the top of everyone. Scoot past the sideline, out of play, and result in the throw in. No one able to get on the end of that second flick. It'll drift and go out of play now. 1-1 one, one is our score. Kansas City East High School, first ever trip to the state Final Four, and they've acquitted themselves nightly, nicely. They are on the cusp right now. they got to get that go-ahead goal, but they right now are right in at Webster Groves, of course. You know, they, been to the, they had never been to the state Final Four until 2014. They... Pushed the envelope. They won back-to-back -back state titles in 14 and 15. Came back in 2018, finished second, and then 2019, third place. So that's their state Final Four history. This one deflects back towards midfield. It's gobbled up there by Webster Groves. They want to quickly get back into the attack. Unable to do so. Good work by East Kansas City to work their way out. Referee's going to blow it dead now. He's waiting to see if there's an advantage at all. There was not. He was right on top of the play. And now with 13 minutes remaining, East taking their time. Flicked on towards the keeper. This is Zarki. No one was really running in behind the play after that flick, so the keeper gets it easily. She heads it away. One more give out here to the near side. They'll throw it back towards the middle. This one headed away by the defense. Hurd gets on the end of it, pushes it back. This is a boom bay to Pesci. Osterly steps in and makes the play. Now they want to break out down that far side. Here's Osterley up over the top, trying to work it to Baker. And we'll get a little forearm in the back there that time. Shabani tried to leverage Baker that time to win the head ball. Here's Pesci. Trying to use the width of the field, see if they can't create something to unlock the defense, which has been very good in the second half. Now we will get a throw in. Now here's an opportunity. Couldn't quite get on the end of it. That Baker, he was making a slot run. Had a little bit of space, and he had a step on the defender. Here's Pesci. Works his way past two defenders into the offensive end. Goes to ground. Referee is going to blow that one dead. They had advantage, but maybe not good enough. Now we're going to stop the clock. That will result in the first yellow card for Webster Groves, and this one <clears throat> will go to Jake Clifton, the freshman. Tracked him down from behind, but he's whistled for the infraction, and 
Doyle's going to check back into the match. Also checking back into the match now is Abdallah. One of the captains, 6'3", junior, three goals, 10 assists on the year. And now a great opportunity for East to see if they can't get the momentum to swim, swing back their way. They had it in the first half. They capitalized. They went up one to nil. But Webster came out of the locker room ready to get that equalizer. They've been able to do that. And since then, we've had some back and forth action. Let's see who wants to kind of grab this game by the scruff of the neck. Here's a shot on goal. Zarki punches it away. Right to one of the offensive players, but good defense by the Statesman as Banty comes across to knock it all the way over towards the sideline. And he's going to launch this one back towards midfield. It drifts and goes out of play. Throw in now on that far side for East Kansas City checking back in the man match is Warnicky as well. And then Elia Kimu wins a Biake. Checks into the match. Good win now. Here's a shot from way out, rising over the top of the goal. So Bube tried to be. footwork in the middle of the park. They'll go the other way now. That ball pinballs between several players. And now East on the attack. Far side. They'll try and get it to the corner flag. Wait for some numbers to get forward. East now on the attack, far side. Let's see if they can't get something generated. Here is a cross. Keeper easily off his line. They had one player lurking around that 12-yard spot, but it was never going to get to him. Didn't quite have the mustard on it, so the keeper's going to tell his defenders and the rest of his team, let's get it back up towards midfield. And he launches it over midfield. There's Baker wants to give and go. That pass not where it needed to be off the boot of Osterley. And his coach talked about it. He's one of the better passers he's seen. Calls him a very slick passer that time. I think he would love to have it back. See if he can't lay it a little bit more into space instead of right at the defender. And if they move to the center now, Webster with a couple of players forward. They still don't have numbers, but got a few more forward. Here's to the side of the box. Opportunity for Cruz. Knocked off the ball, and they'll still retain possession on the far side. There's Doyle. Here's Cruz to the touch line. Can he slide it back? He does. Shot over the top of the bar, and once again, guess who it was, folks? Baker. And we know that's at least his fourth opportunity here in this second half where he's been inside the six-yard box with a chance to – put one in the back of the goal, and he's been unable to do so. Checking back into the match now is Bioki for East High School, and he'll have some rested legs here for this final seven minutes, but Baker's still holding his head. Can't believe he missed yet another one. He has had many, many opportunities in this one. Has the 5'10 senior, nine goals, three assists on the season, and I don't know that any – Opportunities are going to be much better than that one. This one headed back towards the center. So girl counterattack and going nowhere for East. And here comes Webster Groves again. They're also in a center circle. They'll get it out here on the near side. Baker wins the throw in here. And he'll quickly throw it into the box. 
There's Doyle. Doyle goes to ground. That's going to result in a PK, folks. That'll be a penalty. Well, that'll be a penalty. That was easy to see from the press box here in this one. He pulled him down from behind, and Cruz draws the foul, and now Webster grows with the opportunity. Not much you can complain about from that, at least from our angle. We saw that one, but they're, they're pleading their case. Nonetheless, it will be a penalty kick, and Perez has come up huge so far in this match. Let's see who's going to come forward to take this one. It looks like it'll be Doyle. Doyle, 13 goals, 7 assists on the season. So the yellow card in that one goes against Masafiri Ibunga. And it looks like Doyle will be the one to take this one. Oliver Doyle, he's the senior captain. Leading scorer for the squad, goal scorer for the squad with 13 on the year. Perez, the goalkeeper. That son, don't think it'll really play a factor here in this one. This is more straight on instead of from the angle, which comes over the top of our van, uh, viewing vantage point. You can see that long shadow cast there. He converts it, lower corner, 2-1, to one. Webster Groves with 6.33 remaining on the penalty kick. And the yellow card on that one goes to Ibunga. And Doyle converts, lower corner. Well, Webster Groves came out in the second half. They have dominated the possession. They've had a lot of opportunities. and That last offensive opportunity results in the penalty kick, and he buries it into the lower corner. Great shot that time. You see it right there. And As we got the opportunity to watch this one more time, he goes to his own left side, to the right side of the keeper, who guessed that way, but just not enough for Perez to get out there and make the save. This one back to Zarki, back towards midfield, headed up in the air. So Webster Groves now in the position to capture their third state title. Here's Baker in the center, who just launched this one long. A little bit too far for the run. Would have liked to get that to be a little bit more of a diagonal ball to the far side where Cruz was at. Keep the pressure on the defense. Let's see now. Can East build it and come back? First time we've seen him be behind in this final four. That one tackled away. They've got the ball, though. This is a boom bay. Long up the middle. Headed away briefly by the defense. Here's Myhill. Back to Baker on this near side. Still battling for the ball is Hobby. Now the referee's going to blow it dead back here on this near side. Now the referee's going to talk to Baker. Now he is going to stop the clock. We're going to restart all the way back here. So it's 520 remaining now. And my hill will stand over this one to take the restart. Clock will be reset to 530. 6'1 junior here. He wears that 14 shirt. He's been very active and involved the majority of the match. And this one he launches long. They try to get it to Baker up over the top. Comes down. This is Hurd. Far side will work it to Doyle on the corner of the box. Defender in his hip pocket. Still with the ball at his feet on the sideline. Dances past the defender. Now he'll chip this one to the far side. It's Baker at the 12-yard spot. Here's the header. Couldn't quite get it on target. And Perez off his line to grab this one. He wants to quickly get into the counterattack. They did not have enough numbers forward, so he'll hold on to it for a moment. Finally booming it back to the center circle. Statesman right there. This is Lewis back to the middle. This is Baker. 
wanted to get it out there to Doyle on the far side. Didn't quite have the power behind it. This one towards the six. Keeper off his line. This is Zarki. Zarki's going to be all right. He might be shaking up a little bit. He might have a cramp, and referee's going to blow this one dead. He's going to have to come out of the match. He's having an issue with his leg. And well, the referee's going to let him stay in, but Charlie Horse cramp. I don't know what it is. Twisted knee. Here's my hill. Let's see if Keeper Zarki, they don't try a long shot. And we get a little bit of contact here. That was a boom bay. He's got to be a little bit more disciplined now. Up over the top. He's onside. In on goal. Here's Zarki. And it hits off the post. Goes in the back of the net. And Zarki can't move and he can't believe it. 401 remaining. And the break goes the other way on the counter attack. I believe this time, once again, it was Abdallah, I believe, the captain this time. Well, this one went up over the top. He front runs in the goal. Keeper still shaking up. He is gingerly. Tim Belt wants to make sure his keeper's okay. We get a chance to see it here right now as he front runs. All the way through. Ball was up over the top. He gets past him and he just slots it off the post into the back of the goal. What a shot. Well, 4 1 remaining. Little action here late. We've got a, two goals in the last two and a half minutes. We might have some more, and that was against the run of play for sure, but credit to East for gathering themselves, getting the counterattack goal. This one headed down. Webster on the attack once again. Still with the ball. Here's Baker. Baker launches one towards the goal. Keep it right there, but that's where the sun can play a factor, folks. You saw it right there. Another three or four inches higher. He may have had more trouble with it, but this ball up in the air. No one on the end of it yet. It's down in the center circle. Four players battling for it. Finally, Webster comes away with it. This is Hurd. Far sideline, headed up in the air. Ibumbe. Again, trying to be opportunistic, see if they can't get one over the top. Webster Groves now. We'll have a foul. They have an opportunity here with 3.07 remaining. Webster Groves taking their time. Statesman. This is Osterley. They're going to commit some players forward, including Myhill's going to come all the way from his center back position. Now the referee's going to blow this dead. He's going to make sure the keeper's okay, and now they're going to bring the trainer out. Webster Groves is going to have to get their backup keeper. Crew, Ricard in. So Ricard is going to check in. Luka Zarki. And he is not going to be able to go. Zarki's going to come out. He's going to come out with the assistance of the trader. It's his knee. When you look at Ricard, he's a junior, 5'11", appeared in six matches this season. Got three credit, three shutouts to his credit, 31 saves. Can you confirm with East the goal number 20 for me, please? Substitution for Webster Grove, and that one goal, number one, through Riker. And there's a... 
there's no assist, and she's going to plead the case for an assist, but there's no assist. I'm going to by number 24. 24 for me. Here's one launched long towards the box. A couple of players in there. Myhill, the first one on top of it. Webster trying to get possession right here as they do. They'll launch it back in again. Tipped away back out towards midfield. This is Lewis. Flicked into the side of the box. Once again, here's Webster Groves. This is Osterley. See if he has a go here. It's Peplo into the box. Perez off his line. Gloves that one right beyond the six yards. A uh, line there, six-yard box, and with 2.45 remaining, he'll boom this one back towards midfield. This one not over yet, folks, by any stretch. We have it all knotted at two apiece, and it's back and forth. Webster Groves fans still getting into it. East Kansas City. And now here we go, right back into it. Just over two minutes remaining. Who's got the last attack in them during regulation? To the near side. East with an opportunity, side of the box. And that'll result in a corner kick now. Great restart opportunity. Second one of the half as Baker comes, or excuse me, Abdallah comes forward to take this one. It'll be a left-footed corner. Goes to the far post, six-yard box over the top of everyone, out of play. Goal kick now with a minute and a half remaining. Keep a recard selling everybody. Let's get back up towards midfield. So both of the goals here in this one for East go to Twizermana. One minute remaining in the second half. One minute. This one headed back to the Webster back line. One minute remaining here in the contest. Now you might have heard that in the background. Now they'll get a restart. Let's see who wants to take this one. They're not going to go quickly. They've got plenty of time. And they'll leave this one again for Osterley. He's their catalyst. East, everybody back in behind the ball. Webster, they're going to put some players forward, including Myhill once again into the box. 30 seconds remaining. Webster knows they got one last chance here on this one. They'll put this bullet to Baker's head. He flicks it onto the far side, still into the side of the box. It's kept in, deflects it, will go out of play, and that'll result nope, in a goal kick. So that'll just about do it for this one, folks. By the time Perez, the keeper, gets it, Gets it back into play. I believe we will be just about out of time. Ibumbe is probably not even going to launch this one. He five, will just four, pull three, it back, and that'll do it, folks. We have run out of time here in regulation. Two to two is our score. Webster Groves against East Kansas City. We're going to put five minutes on the clock. We'll have a five-minute break here now. When we come back on the other side of that one, we'll have the first 15-minute overtime period. If we're still knotted at the end of the first 15 minutes, we'll have another one. This is a situation where it is instant victory. Should you get the goal, you win the contest. So we're going to take a break. When we come back on the other side, we'll have overtime action. You are watching the Missouri State Boys Class 3 State Championship match on the Misha.tv network.
three title match. And we are locked in a good one as we get set for overtime here in this one. Uh, it's East Kansas City, the Bears, taking on the, the Statesmen of Webster Groves. East Kansas City opened the scoring in that first half. <clears throat> it was Twizermana getting the initial tally on the assist in that one from Rivera. And then he gets a second one to knot it again at two apiece. In between, there were sandwiched two goals from Webster Groves, the first one from Osterley, and then the penalty kick converted by Doyle with 6.33 remaining. Webster had the majority of the run to play in that second half. I would say East had the majority of the run to play in the first half. So a battle of two halves, and we are knotted at two apiece as we get ready to go to overtime. One of the storylines here in this one is the starting keeper, Luka Zarki, is out. Took a knock to the knee, and backup keeper is in there now. Well, in fact, it's both backup keepers because Perez is in there for East, and their backup keeper has been sick all weekend and unable to make the trip. So Perez has proven to be very very strong. He's made a number of point-blank saves, and Webster had a number of opportunities, especially in the first 10 minutes of that second half, to really pour some goals in. They were just unable to convert, so now it's all for the taking in this overtime. Should you score, you are the champion. If we have no score at the end of the first 15-minute period, then we will go to a second overtime period. Here's a boom bay. He'll play a long one. With East going into the wind. They're wearing that all black strip. Here's a shot from well out. This one's deflected into the box. Opportunity now. And that see the shadows there. This could play a factor on a ball or a shot from this particular camera angle that you're watching. You can see it right over the shoulder to the goalkeeper to the left side of your screen. In this case, it is Recart. Recart. Far side. Baker on the bicycle kick slip down. Now Webster with possession on that far sideline, trying to break down the line. We'll get a foul, and so that will result now in a restart here. Webster with the first opportunity on the set piece in the offensive end. 30 yards or so from the end line over on the sideline. Let's see if they commit some players forward. They do again. Myhill came forward a number of times late in the contest. He's doing just that again. Warnicky also up there. Maybe their tallest player to the back stick towards the keeper. Perez comes off his line, punches it away. Still a battle for the ball. Referee's going to blow this one dead. And it'll result in a free kick now. Perez got just enough of that one to knock it out of there. But there was an infraction, and so it'll be a restart now for the Bears. This one back to midfield. Go back the other way. Here's Baker with another opportunity. The side of the box. He goes to ground. Contact there. Referee said no foul. Play on. Perez gobbles this one up, and he's telling his teammates to get it back towards midfield. This is a low liner. He's off his line. Can this be an opportunity? It's Doyle to Baker. Baker pushed his touch just a little bit too far away, and the boom bay was right there to knock it away from him. This is Pesci. He'll push this one forward. They try to get it up there again to Twizermana, and He's knocked off the ball. Free kick, throw in. Actually, throw in for Webster Groves. Try to get it to Doyle. Out of play again. Throw in again for the Statesman. This is Lewis. And they're trying to work it to Doyle again. This diving header out of play. But Webster's gaining about 15 to 20 yards on each one of these. Doyle saying, hold on a minute. Let me get my boot back on. Don't forget now, we're going to have that Class 2 championship. That'll be coming your way right about 4.30. To the touchline, scissor to out of there. This will result in a throw-in. So here comes Lewis. He's going to come forward. Haven't seen him get as much forward here in this match as we did yesterday. In fact, this is his furthest line forward on this throw-in that we've seen in the second half. That one scissored out of there. That'll result in a corner kick. First corner kick for the Statesman here this second half, or this uh, first overtime period, excuse me.
This is Osterley. Right into the teeth of the box. Keeper popped it up in the air. He did not grab it cleanly, but Webster didn't have everybody there. My Hill was lurking, but couldn't quite get on the end of it. Here's Pesci with a nice little bit of work. He'll throw it to the far side. On the attack now. Here comes East. Back to Pesci. Weaves his way to the middle of the park. Past a couple of defenders. Puts it on his right boot. Clean tackle. Right now he went up over the top. As this one goes over the top of everyone as well. Perez off his line. Has to knock it out of there. Webster only had Doyle forward. Well, Perez was hoping it could drift into the box and he could grab it, but it wasn't going to make it there before Doyle did. So good pressure from him. He's got the ball at his feet right now. Puts it on his right foot. Wants to have a go. Can't get the extra step. Abumbe knocked him off of it. Here comes East on the counter. That should be an offside. It will be. The flag goes up. Referee was right on top of that one. Couldn't hold back on his run. And here comes Webster Groves again. Statesman. Championship would be their third. For East, it would be their first. This is Doyle. Back to the defender. Knocked out of play. Corner kick now. Their second one. And it will be a goal kick. Thought they had won the corner, but. Perez will take his time. Wait for his team to get ready, and then he'll give it to Abumbe, who will knock it back towards midfield. Here's Warnicky. Into the middle. This is Peplo. Late whistle there for the referee on that one. For the infraction, and now we'll go the other way. With Abumbe, he'll take this one. He'll launch this one long towards the top of the box. Isn't going to make it. That's into the wind, and that one got held up. This one pushed towards the corner. No one going to be able to get on the end of it. Doyle does try at the last moment, try to turn on the afterburners, but tried to deke the defender thinking that he wasn't going to go for it. Then he made a play for it, but nonetheless, throwing deep in their own end. For the Bears, here is that long throw in. Peplo and Abumbe there collide. Abumbe shaking up, but he's going to be okay. He wants to stay in the match. In fact, he's good enough. He's going to go ahead and take this free kick. See if they don't try a different tactic. The last couple that he's tried to get out of his own end and launch him, been knocked down by the wind. Here's another one. This one over the top of everyone. Tough one to judge, too, with that wind and then the sun that was right in the angle. Throwing now on the far side. Eight minutes remaining. Out of play throwing now for Webster Groves. Baker takes it early. Gets it to the corner. This is Doyle. Went the back to the, de <coughs> to the defender. Gives it to Baker. Puts it on the ground. Intercepted there by Abumbe. He's got a little bit of space. He's going to build it out. Now back towards midfield. Nifty little move on the attack now. Just two players forward, third one coming, but they do get it to the right side of the box. Let's see if they can't launch it. Twizermana knocked off the ball. Clean contact. Fans from east wanted a foul. They're not going to get one. Here's Baker. They'll do a little give and go. That's intercepted. Good play coming back now. Let's see if they can counterattack. He's looking for Pesci. He's got Pesci. One man out here on the near side. He launches it in. Keeper off his line. That would be a handball. He knocked that one down with his hand. <clears throat> coming out the other way. Keeper again. That's where that sunshine can cause some problems. And the wind, which was blowing away from the keeper on that particular Instance and it's good cross that time from Abwe, but it's 
did not result in anything for East now. We are eight and a half minutes into this first overtime period. That one settled down. They'll try and go back the other way. Into the middle, Abumbe. Near side, this is Pesci. Tries to beat one defender, can't do so. Out of play, throw in now, this will be Lewis. Long ball, they try to get it up to Doyle. Defender goes back one more time. And Doyle trying to force the air. Can't quite do so. That one knocked away. Here's Baker. Into Doyle. Defender in his hip pocket. Faces up with him now. Here's the cross. Still with the opportunity. It's Peplo. Far side. This one more time to Hurd. Now here's Doyle. Tries to work past the defender. Can't quite do so. That'll be a corner kick now. Second corner kick of the overtime period. 5-13 remaining. We've got a player down here at midfield. And they're going to call the trainer out right away. Don't forget now, folks, you can own this piece of Mission content forever. Immediately following the contest, click the download button. That will take you to the purchase page. And from there, you'll be able to buy this piece of Mission content forever. You'll have the download. Save it on a hard drive. Put it on a flash drive, whatever you want to do. But it will be your content to own forever. And you can do it right here on the Misha.tv network. This young man shaking up for sure. going to come off. I'm not sure if he's going to be under his own power or not. He's pretty shaken up, pretty ginger, gingerly walking with that leg. and He'll use some assistance to get off, but it looks like he's going to be okay, which is nice to see. Ibunga getting ready to check back in. Before that, though, that's going to be a Kenya, the number three shirt, getting another run out. Right, Donut also checking back in the match for Baker. This is Cruz. These two have really Caused a lot of issues for the defense. So Abdallah comes off. He's a little shaken up. We'll see if he can get back into the match. Now we got that corner kick, folks. 5-10 remaining here in this first overtime period. You score, you win. This one launched far towards the middle of the goal and it just falls into the back netting so never had an opportunity to get into play Webster lets that one go by the board also now checking back in we mentioned we want to go easy bunga Musafiri bunga the 5'7 junior fans still in this one one of these two teams will get that championship. Earlier today in Class 1, it was St. Francis Borgia getting their first ever state championship in boys soccer. Webster's got two to their credit. They'd love a third. And, of course, East this is their first time ever in the Final Four. Out of play right in front of the Webster student section. They'll have a throw in now. They'll go short, try and play a little possession, see if they can't build it up. And here's Warnicky. Looks it over. To Lewis. Lewis with loads of space in front of him. Looks things over. Clifton. We'll try to get it to Cruz. Unable to do so. It's intercepted. And now they'll play a long ball. Will East on that far side. No one able to get on the end of it yet. Still battling. 
went towards the top of the box. Warnicky stepped through that time to knock it away. But East gets possession. Let's see if they can't build something up here. Into the box. They hit the ball. Used the ball on the hand there. Used the hand on the ball, I should say. Looks like we'll stop the clock now with 325 remaining here. Another injured player. Looks like Abdallah is getting ready to come back into the match. Webster will get the restart now here in just a moment with 325 remaining. Recap the scoring here in this one. It was early on, in, or about a little more than halfway through that first half, as Trizermanic got the first goal. Then, 13 minutes into the second half, 12 and a half to be exact, it was Osterley. Followed up 21 minutes later on a PK. That was Doyle. He gave Webster a two to one lead, but it was late. 401 remaining, and Trizermanic gets his second, and that has pushed his team to a 2 2 tie, and we are in overtime. And right now, first overtime period as this one drifts out of play. It'll result in a goal kick. Andy Bungo. Bungo. Plays it here to the near side. This one headed right back in by Webster. This is Hurd. He can't settle it down. They finally do get it. This is Warnick. He takes his time. Plays it across the back one time. Far side. This one headed out of play up into the stands, into that fan section for East. Long throw to the side of the box. Brought down. Nobody with possession yet. Finally, Webster wins it. That was Cop coming forward. He deflects it once again. Still being batted around. Finally, we'll get some contact. Referee saying play on. He's let a lot go here in this one today. Players have... I think appreciated to a certain extent. He has made some calls, a couple that have been complained about by the by both teams, but they have gotten an opportunity to make contact, that's for sure. Here's Pesci. Trying to work his way out. He's under pressure here. He'll draw the foul and get it on the way coming out. Clifton very aggressive there that time. Pesci a little bit smaller than him, just tried to physically take the ball away from him, wasn't able to do so. So, and here's a boom bay. Midfield for him, this one held up in the air again by the wind, but they do get possession. On the build up now, here's East, still with the ball in the center circle. To this near side. Still working it. That's a Bob way. Here's Abwe. And this went out of place. So it'll result in the throw in here. 50 seconds remaining. Let's see if Webster doesn't commit everybody forward now and see if they can't get one rush here at the end of the overtime period. This is Lewis. He'll come forward to take the throw. Who wants to dump it down in the corner? It's off the side. Deflects out of play with 35 seconds remaining. Deep in their own end. I don't know that 
East is going to be in a big-time hurry to get this one back into play. 25 seconds remaining now. Into the middle. Far side now, and they'll try and break out. It's Abdallah on the far side. It's knocked away. Webster with one final opportunity here in the overtime period, headed away. And with 10 seconds remaining, do they have a shot at it? That's boomed far over to the sideline, and that'll do it for the overtime period. Nil-nil here. So we're still not at a two apiece. We'll just have a two-minute break here, so we'll keep it right here. And again, we'll recap that scoring for you. Again, it was opened in that first half, 14.07 remaining. Twizermana gets the goal. Rivera, I believe, is who they credit the assist to on the flip of halftime. 27.32 left on the clock. It was Jonas Osterley who gives Webster the equalizer. And then, almost 21 minutes later, 20.59 to be exact. On the penalty kick, Oliver Doyle converts. That gives Webster the 2-1 to one lead. And then, a little over two and a half minutes later, it was Twizermana once again. As we're getting set here for this second overtime again, this is a instant victory. If you get the shot in the back of the net, you win the state championship. 15 more minutes on the clock to do just that. If we're still knotted at the end of that one, then we'll go to penalty kicks. Coaches have about another minute now to implore a little wisdom on each of their teams. Both of these teams, 20 wins on the season. Whoever gets to the 21st, that will crown them the state title holder in Class 3. Three losses and three ties for Webster Groves. Two losses and one tie for East. And as we've capped here this afternoon, it will be Webster's third championship. This is the first ever appearance in the Final Four for East, so they'll have the opportunity to take the the big prize back west to the Kansas City area should they win it. Webster Groves, first one back out there on the pitch right now. They're going to be moving from right to left on your computer screen. They know what's at stake here. Second place finish in 2018. Third place finish when the seniors in this particular class were freshmen in 2019. This would be Tim Velton's first crown. Of course, Coach Guerrero, his first crown as well. And Webster will start with the ball here in this second half. Officials all set to go. They check it with the keeper one more time. and Here they go. Webster playing the long ball like they did earlier. The start of the second half. To that far side. Opportunity now here. So Kenya tries to make his run into the box. This is Baker. He'll scissor kick it back towards midfield. Got to give him a lot of credit. He's the one who brought the energy at the start of that second half, which really pushed Webster to a number of offensive opportunities, and he nearly converted. He had four real good scoring opportunities. This one high, long to the far side of the box. It's East. They'll track it down before it goes out of play. Still with the ball, chips it into the center of the box, headed away, and now Webster wants to build it back up. This is Osterley. Try to work it out here to Baker. Can't quite do so. Keeper. Recart off his line. Again, the starting goalkeeper, Luka Zarki, shaken up with about five minutes remaining in that second half and less than a minute later, East took advantage of it, and they got the equalizer. Here's Webster now on the buildup. They wanted to get it to Baker down the line. 
That's knocked away back towards midfield. Cop heads it back in. Good play. This one thrown forward as well. Nobody up there for East. Well, the penalty shootout is definitely a roll of the dice any way you slice it, especially this late in the season. You've got two backup goalkeepers in there. But Perez has played the entire final four with his start with the starting goalkeeper for East out due to sickness. Throwing now here for Baker. Here is the throwing towards the six yard box. Headed away. This one uses the outside of his foot to get it in the box. Opportunity now. This is Doyle. Cuts it back. Wanted to take a shot, could not. Three defenders right there. Still with the ball, though it's Doyle. Trying to work it with the defender in his hip pocket. Now he's pulled down. Referee's going to blow this one dead. He draws the foul. Really, that's what he did there. Waited for the opportune time with the contact to go to ground and gets the foul. Referee was right on top of it as well. He's about 10 yards away. Saw all the action. Now with 12 and a half minutes remaining here in this second overtime period, this is an opportunity. Everybody back. All but one player in the box. More deep enough on the sideline. This one's a line drive. Six yards back off the head of Baker. He was the first one to it. Then off the leg of somebody on the back side of that. He skimmed it just a little bit, did Baker. But the keeper, Perez, was in good position. Went low to the ground to make the save. And, and that'll keep it knotted at two apiece. His boot to the far side. Now a breakout for East, and they can't retain possession. Throw in now for Webster on the far side here with 11 and a half minutes remaining. Again, we'd love to see another moment of inspiration. We've had a few in this one so far, some great individual efforts. Midfield now, here's Pesci. He'll play a long ball down the sideline. Myhill is right there defensively for Webster. He easily grabs that one, but he gives it away to Pesci in a dangerous position. Pesci now straight away from the goal, works his way to the top of the box. This one deflects. It'll go out of play, resulting in a goal kick here with just under 11 minutes remaining here in overtime period number two. And this is Shabani checking back into the lineup. The sophomore 5'8", he'll be in the center of defense. This one headed back. Near side. This is Cop. Plays a defeat. Good stepping in there at the time to play defensively. Abumbe. He reads the ball very well. Down at the corner now. They try to get it to Doyle. Had a little bit of spin on it, on it, excuse me, drifted out of play. And East just very content to take their time here before they get it back in. Long throw in now. Here's Baker gives it off. This is Osterley. Lewis. Warnicky. My Hill, those work it around. He'll play one forward. Good ball to Hurd. Hurd, he's got Baker with him. Tries to work it up to pass Baker. He's still got the ball at his feet. He'll launch this one across. Top of the 18. No one able to get on the end of it. We've got a battle now, and a couple players go down. Referee's going to blow this one dead. That was Pesci involved in the play for East. Good 
play here now as we try to make the build up for Hurd. Hurd knocked off the ball. He'll draw the foul. Dangerous opportunity now for Webster Groves. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Osterley now. He's going to go over and take this one. He does quickly get the restart. This one launched into the box. A couple players in there, but good defense. Good organization. They got a number of players back. Did East. Here's My Hill. Looking it over. He'll play it out here to Baker on this near side. Little back heels. He tried to work it in there to Peplo, who's pushed forward. Peplo not quite as assertive here in this one as he was in the match yesterday, but sometimes that is just a product of the other team as well. He's got to have a different role or a different duty. He was more involved in the attack yesterday, more defensive-minded today. Here's Hurd. Still battling for the ball. Squirts free. Still battling for it. Still. Here's Webster Groves with an opportunity. Can he get a shot off? Nifty little play. This is Osterly. Left-footed chip. There's Perez right there on the near post. You had Peplo that made the run to the near side post, but not really nobody to work it in. And nobody coming up to follow and trail the play. Long ball now. Can they get on the end of it? He does before it goes out of play. Good defense from Webster Groves. At least get it back up the sideline and not give up the corner kick or the attack for that matter. That was Munga. Up in the air. Opportunity now for East. Can they capitalize? Well, that was a boom bay. He's really one of the guys you want to have with the ball in that offensive end. This is Osterly. He's one of the guys Webster wants with the ball in the offensive end. Here's Hurd. Lay it out here for Cop. cop has got Baker to his left. He'll throw it in the slot. I can bet they're going to try and get this one to Doyle. He's been their target man. I see him trying to back down the defender. Instead, they go shorter. Here's Baker. Now he tries to go to Doyle. Good defense. He had him double team there. Here's Cop, right into the teeth of the defense. Baker crashes the play and deflects it now. Other way for East. 5.20 remaining here in the second overtime. On the move here, cut back, side of the box. Still in the box, player goes to ground. They wanted a foul, not going to get one. Referee was in great position to make the call or the no call. This is a boom bay. He slots one through. Oh, and he was just off stride. He's begging for a foul. He just fell down. Ball went one way. He went the other way with 4.51 remaining. And Who has... That moment of inspiration. Who's got the quality to finish in the final third? Here's Doyle. We know he does should he get the opportunity. Here's Pesci. He's been a great playmaker. Throws this one long. Nobody there. They were still coming back to be onside. Again, with Webster Gove trying to play that straight high line. Across the four back defenseman. Here's a boom bay. He might be somebody that could do it. Right now he runs past two defenders. He'll slot one through. Again, offensive player coming back the other way. and He's a little miffed at his teammate, but nonetheless, you can bet he's going to reload and come right back at it again. This one trapped down. Pesci intercepts it. He'll throw it to the far side. They got some numbers forward now. Continuing on the buildup. Here's Pesci again. Towards the six, headed away nicely by My Hill, but not out of danger. Pesci was there, couldn't quite retain possession. Now long ball the other way. This is Doyle. Doyle chests it down. Plays it back, wants it back. Doesn't get it, it's intercepted. And 
It says recart. Crew recart. Called upon an emergency duty here. Opportunity now. East continuing to work it. Nifty little footwork there. Finally, the defense comes away with it, but not out of the danger area. This one deflected. This will go over the end line, and this will result now in the corner kick. Unofficially, it's the first one of the half, or the, excuse me, of the overtime for East, and they're going to pull their players forward here. Six in the box. Webster, everybody back. This one curling away from the goalkeeper towards the six-yard, top of the six-yard. It gets away. This is a boom bay. Tries to tee it up on his right foot. He'll play it out here. little opening on the side. Here's a shot. Offside. And we'll get an offside call. That'll be the second one here of overtime. Officials flag went up. Two minutes remaining. Now they'll go the other way. This is Cop to Baker. Trying to work his way through a couple of defenders. He goes to ground. Referee will call that foul. Here's Osterley. Long ball trying to get it to Hurd. Nifty little settle by him. He's got two defenders on him. Can't get past both of them. Boombe now after the interception. This is Warnicky. Osterley. Heard battling for it once again. And he'll win it. Peplo. Far side to Clifton. One more time to Doyle, and he'll lay it off. Wanted it back. Here's a shot. This one off the outside of the foot. That never had a chance. Now Boombe is going to come all the way back to take this restart on the goal kick. Looks like the way we're headed right now, One folks. We will have a penalty kick One shootout. Each team will select five players. We'll pick one selected goal. And that's the order. Or the, then we'll kick those five. Whoever's out, up on top at the end of that will win the penalty kick shootout. Should they still be tied, we'll go to another round. That one, scissor kicked out of there with 35 seconds remaining on the far side. Throw in now for East. Side of the box now. Can you draw the foul? No. Back to midfield. Webster packing it in defensively. This one along the turf. Keeper, a little bit of trouble with it. They He does give up the corner kick now. Opportunity. East can throw everybody up there. Here's the corner kick, left footer, knocked up out of the air. That should just about do it here. Abumbe with the shot, deflects around a couple of players, and the clock has wound out. The buzzer sounds, and at the end of regulation and the end of two overtime periods, we are still knotted at two apiece, folks, and that will result in a penalty kick shootout. We'll find out which goal side they select. Well, each team will pick five players here. The goalkeepers are eligible to take a penalty kick. Um, Doyle likely will be one of the two or one of the five <clears throat> for Webster Grove especially since he took that earlier PK let's recap the scoring now as the referees sort everything out opening goal from Twizermana 1407 remaining in the first half then it was two unanswered for Webster Groves first 
Osterley gets it with 27-32, and then with 6.33 remaining, the penalty kick from Doyle gave them the 2-1 to lead after they had equalized. And then we were all knotted at two apiece after another great goal from Twizermana. He front ran as the ball squirted free, was able to get it on goal and slot it past the keeper off the post. And they're going to talk things over, bring the captains here towards midfield. Ibumbe and Oliver Doyle. Have a quick little coin flip and Started. Could you have the fourth official call up here to the press box? I'm going to need him to help me with numbers for East. All right, now. Kicks will be taken to the goal to the right side of your camera angle where the scoreboard is at. Webster Grove's keeper has walked his way down to the goal. He looks things over. It looks like it will be East that will have the first kick. Webster has selected a number of players. They're out at midfield, including Peplo, Osterley, and Doyle. Looks like also in there is Myhill. All right. Perez will take his place, too, in the goal. It looks like Webster will shoot first here in this one. Webster will shoot first. So Doyle will be the first kick for Webster Groves. Doyle converted one earlier, 6.33 remaining. That looked like it might be the winner, but just two and a half minutes later, the equalizer came. He slots this one. Perez gets a piece of it, but it's a goal. Now first one for East. This is Abdallah. He's one of the captains, 6'3", junior. <clears throat> Three goals on the season for Abdallah. And Ricart will be the goalkeeper. Both these goalkeepers are the backups. They were called into action. Perez has gone the whole way in the final four as the starting goalkeeper. Hassani has been sick and unable to go. And then Zarki took a knock to the knee with about five minutes remaining in regulation, and since then it's been Ricard. Left-footed shot. He stops it. He went to the right side. No goal. 
To his left, keeper's right. Great diving save by Recart. Now here's Branyan Hurd. He got an assist yesterday on that goal from Peplo, and he'll be the next one to take it. Hurd on the season. Seven goals, six ass or seven assists. He's a senior at 5'8". Perez got a piece of that first one. He's left-footed, so let's see how he wants to attack the ball here. Hurd goes... To the right side, he converts another one. Keeper went to the same way he did the first time. Heard put it the other way and slots it in. Now Pesci will come forward. He'll take the next one for East Kansas City. Actually going to take a long run up here. He's standing outside the 18-yard box. Keeper has to stay on that line. Can move. He makes another save, this time to his left, and that was equally as big as the first one. Pesci can't believe it. He really didn't place it in the corner. It was more towards the center of the goal, but as soon as the keeper went down to his own left, the ball was right there. And now if Webster Grove scores this one, could really put the pressure on. Slots this one the other way from the keeper. Now they have to make all three of the remainders. Now here comes the captain, Abumbe. He's 6'4", junior. Boombe on the season, seven goals and five assists. He's really been their catalyst, probably their best player both of the last two days. And he sinks this one into the corner past the keeper. Now Webster just has to get one of these last two. This will be Peplo. He scored the winner yesterday. Let's see what he wants to do here. Right foot of boot. Puts it in the back of the goal, and that'll do it, folks. Webster Groves. They are your 2022 state champion. They convert four, convert four penalty kicks, and they win this one 3-2 to two in penalty kick fashion. Tough way for East to lose their first ever state championship match as Webster Groves comes away victorious in this one. Both teams had their chances and Webster Groves, when it came right down to it in penalty kicks, they make all four of the ones that they took. And the keeper, Ricard, off the bench, makes two fabulous saves in that PK shootout. And that helps propel his team to the victory. A lot of hugs and a lot of heartbreak out there, a lot of cheers, a lot of clapping, and you'll see some tears as well. Both teams left it all out there on the field here as the sun starts to set here in the St. Louis area. And... Now we'll have that award ceremony for Class 3, and both of these teams will receive their respective medals and their trophies. But great match all the way around. Full credit to Coach Guerrero and his team from Kansas City, the East High Bears, and full credit as well to Tim Velton, Coach Velton, and the Webster Grove Statesmen. Of course, they just got to travel a couple miles back east here on Highway 44. They get to take that trophy back to campus, but what a – championship it's been
Webster Grove student body on the far side. They've emptied the stands. They're euphoric in this one. All the parents, all the crowd here on this near side for Webster also extremely happy with the championship as well. And so each team now will get their respective trophies and their medals. Congratulations to both on a hard-fought fought ball game. And when it came right down to it, it was the penalty kicks and the keeper, Ricard, able to to make the save. As they're doing that, let's recap it. Final stats for this one. Starting goalkeeper for Webster had two saves. Luca Zarki also gave up two goals, one save for Recart as he came on behind that. East had 12 shots. Webster had 17. Elias had made seven saves, gave up two goals. So great back and forth action. 17 fouls versus East, 11 versus Kansas City or on either team, should I say. Six corner kicks apiece. And at the end of it, it was the penalty kick shootout. And in that penalty kick shootout, Webster comes away victorious. Everyone out there on the field trying to get things organized here for the trophy and medal ceremony. As East Kansas City, they will get their trophy first. And as they do, we'll turn it over to the PA announcer, Jim Powers. Congratulations to the East High School Bears on a fine 2022 season and a second place finish in the state of Missouri. And now for our Christmas kick team, let's give a big round of applause for the Wuxton Road State Team. Now, individual medals first, head coach Tim Belton. Assistant coaches, Doug Gandy, Sam Castle, Jeff Session, Kyle Coster, 
Pat Rocco, David Byock, Brandon Whale, Wells. And now for the players, number zero, Luca Zarki. Number one, Hugh Reichardt. Number three, Asher Lupozo. Number three, Gabriel Wright. Number four, Charles Hurd. Number five, John Lewis the second. Number seven, Sebastian Attire. Number eight, Thomas Osterley. Number nine, Jameson Teplo. Number ten, Oliver Doyle. Number eleven, William Tuck. Number twelve, Matthew DiGiarmo. Number thirteen, Alexander Mueller. Number 14, Riley Myhill. Number 15, Luke O'Neill. Number 16, Owen Banty. Number 17, Henry Utterson. Number 42, Owen Cruz. Number 35, Jake Clifton. Number 20, Javi Baker. Number 21, Brendan Cruz. Number 22, Claude Bailey. Number 24, Jack Armstrong. Number 26, Matthew Maxwell Wynicke. And number 77, Aiden White Mountain. Congratulations to the Western Road Statesman for a terrific 2014 season of Central City in the state of Missouri. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The Webster Grove Statesmen capture their third state title, and they have been a mainstay in this Class 3 championship since 2014 when they took their first crown. And in the last eight years, they have won three of those <coughs> with a second-place finish in 18th and a third in 19th. On the other side of the pitch, East Kansas City, nothing to hang your head about. This one will sting for a minute, but a lot of juniors on this team, they'll reload. There's a lot of sophomores that can come right back next year and make another go of it. Give Coach Guerrero a ton of credit. Congratulations to them for a great, great season as we get ready to wrap things up here on this one. We want to give a shout-out to all the folks along the network that helped us here. David, our producer, sitting by our side all afternoon long. Nicholas, our cameraman, out there braving, braving the weather. My name is Matt Judkins signing off now for the Class 3 championship. It's Webster Groves. And you see him right there, your 2000. And 22 Missouri State Boys Class 3 State Championship until the next one. So long for just a while.